Joe Moore, you, uh, I think more than most aldermen, and I'm not sure you've gotten enough credit on this, but you've tried to make a lot of your uh, community decisions uh, transparent. Uh, you've, you hold a lot of community meetings, probably more than most aldermen. Uh, you have a zoning committee that has a, a, a makeup of people who represent this very diverse and uh, vital ward. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I just wanted to share that, I guess. I oh, wanted well, to say that yeah. it's an ongoing thing that you've done. Well, uh, you know, it's what's your experience on that? Have you had any uh, any people kind of uh, blow back about people uh, saying that they're cut out? Uh, any uh, w more wealthier homeowners uh, trying to get more influence? People trying to get through the zoning committee without going through the zoning committee? That well, kind of process. Uh, um, We've always had a very participatory uh, process in this neighborhood. Even before I came here, my predecessor, David Orr, was uh, uh, very uh, much oriented toward openness and transparency and, and making sure the community was brought in and all the decision-making that occurred in the ward. And I've tried to carry on that tradition. You mentioned my zoning committee. It's a committee of neighborhood residents and representatives of the major community organizations who... Uh, advise me on all zoning and land use issues that come before me. Uh, we have community meetings on every zoning and land use issue that comes before me so that the neighbors are informed about what happens. And the advent of the internet has been a wonderful tool for increasing participation, participation and, and transparency. You can put a lot of information on, on the internet uh, with respect to all sorts of decisions, including uh, zoning decisions and how we spend our ward infrastructure dollars. Um, and of course, I try to keep everyone informed about what's going on in the neighborhood too with uh, regular email updates. In fact, if anyone wants to uh, get regular electronic newsletters that tell folks, tell you where there's community meetings, what's going on in the neighborhood, uh, what things are happening, uh, go to ward49.com, scroll to the bottom of the page and you can sign up for our, our electronic newsletter. You know, I agree with you uh, that the uh, the internet has been real helpful and I, I th you're using it to, uh, very effectively. But one of the things that came up when we were having a discussion about the Democratic Party in the ward was that we noticed that if we sent emails out to everyone but did not do a, a, a sl snail mail mailing, uh, some of the Latino and black neighbors in the ward don't, aren't, uh, have as much internet access right now. That's right. How do you see we could c correct that or deal with that? Well, um, uh, we I hadn't thought of it till it came right. up, but I was really, I thought it was really uh, insightful of you and Wayne when you talked about it. Yeah, well, we need to, you know, you need to, to communi use all forms of communication to communi communicate with people. And, uh, uh, you know, there, there have been a lot of tremendous strides in opening up the internet to. Uh, uh, low-income folks as well as the middle and upper-income folks who, who, who now enjoy it, but there's still more work to be done. So we, in addition to doing our email alerts, we also uh, do the old traditional flyering of the neighborhood. Um, and for these meetings for participatory budgeting, we extensively flyer the area there where the meeting's going to occur that night or a few days from now, let people know what, uh, what, when the meeting is, where it's at, uh, we fly her twice so that when the flyers come down because of, of rain or weather, because a building janitor takes them down, we put another one up. Or anti-people. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and uh, so uh, we haven't abandoned the old traditional methods of getting the word out uh, uh, just because we're using the Internet a lot more. Joe Moore, let me ask you a little bit about some of these meetings that have taken place in the participatory, participatory budgeting process. Uh, have there been any arguments? Have, uh, do you see conflicting interests? Uh, how, do these, how are these committees evolving? How many people are showing up? Uh, uh, share, I, you know, I intended to go to one the other night, but I probably ended up getting stuck at the Y. Well, you know what? There's, uh, <laughs> you have three other chances, I Michael. Uh, while we encourage people to go to the, to the uh, uh, meeting in their area, uh, we don't check IDs at the door, and if you and we know people have busy schedules. If they can't make a meeting in their area, they can go to another area, attend a meeting, and and participate. Uh, thus far, there's been really no conflict. Uh, now that's because we haven't begun to make the decisions yet. It's been an informational 
and brainstorming process right now. Uh, but the rubber is going to meet the road pretty soon, and and um, and decisions are going to be made. And I can imagine that there will be some disagreements, some conflicts, some some back and forth, some perhaps horse trading, kind of the things that uh, happen when uh, people are trying to get their particular project that they support through. But I'll tell you, what I've been told about the experience in other cities is, by and large, what it does is it uh, opens it up so that people not only think about what their block or their immediate neighborhood, they think about the community as a whole. And what you find out is sometimes people decide, you know what? That person's making a pretty compelling case for their, the project that's going to help in their part neck of the woods that might benefit the whole community. I'll, I'll support their project and maybe my project will go the next year. That's what the people that I've worked with on a participatory budgeting process tell me has happened in other nations. And, you know, and we're really blessed. We've got two real dynamic people who have been promoting the idea of bringing participatory budgeting to the United States, helping us for free, advising us on how to set up our process. They've flown in from, uh, one guy's down in Argentina right now. He's flown in from Argentina to help us out. Another guy, professor at Brown University out in Rhode Island, has flown in and helped us organize the meetings, giving us advice. And both of, me, both of them tell me that, that uh, the process is remarkably conflict-free, that even the people who lose out in the final community vote uh, uh, aren't that upset because they at least know that they've gotten a fair hearing and, and, and that the process has been open. And that's all we're going to try to do here. Joe Moore, uh, just briefly, uh, if you could tell me, uh, there's a lot of uh, street work's been going on in our ward. Is that part of uh, your discretionary budget, or is that other money that's either coming from federal stimulus, or does the city spend more than the million, uh, million four hundred thousand each year? Most of the, uh, the 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 new sidewalks, the street resurfacing, uh, the c new curbs, and and the like come out of my uh, infrastructure menu, my menu money. Uh, however, Sheridan Road, which was done this year in the 49th Ward in Rogers Park, uh, which was in horrible need of repair, that was done this year using primarily federal stimulus dollars with a little bit of money from the state capital budget. In addition, we've got probably about a dozen or so streets lined up for resurfacing residential streets that we paid for out of some state funds that uh, State Senator Heather Staines helped us obtain. Uh, so. Um, uh, so we're going to get a, a, a lot of uh, repairs from a, a bunch of different sources. We're a lucky bunch here in the 49th Ward, and we're glad to have you uh, on the radio show. This participatory budgeting process is really exciting. How about giving the listeners a website one more time where they can go find out more about you this go and to other issues? Ward49.com. On the home page, you look on the right-hand side. There are a bunch of various links. Click on the link that says participatory budgeting. And you'll go right to that page. It'll tell you all about it, tell you when the meetings are, tell you how I've spent the money in previous years. And also, we've put up on the web all the ideas that people have come up with so far. So people can kind of look at the ideas and decide what kind of ideas they favor. So I encourage everybody to come involved. The, there's uh, uh, a week of meetings, the first week of December. So um, uh, please come by and participate and get your input in, learn about what this exciting process is all about, and then in April we'll see you at the polls. Okay, you've been listening to Live from the Heartland. This is Michael James for all of us involved. Evan West doing some engineering. Lisa Smith, not only an engineer but a producer and a host. Katie Hogan, Laura Herman, our executive producer. Uh, we encourage you to do good in the world. The world needs all the good that you do. Go to youtube.com slash heartlandmedia for earlier editions. All power to the people. This is Michael James for all of us saying over and out.